In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can create your own custom DAX functions using the new UDF functions in Power BI, user-defined functions. We're going to have a look at what it is, how to use it, and why you use it in the first place. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. UDFs is basically a feature that allows you to package DAX logics into functions that you can reuse within your semantic model. And while it's got a lot of utility on its own, I would just give you a word of caution when it comes to using it with your production reports as usual. UDFs work exactly like any other functions that you use in your DAX calculations. So these functions could be things like date add, sum, divide, except as the name suggests, it's user defined. This means you can control the name of the function, what parameters it takes, what calculation it does, and what values it returns. The keyword there is reusable. What that means is that if you have calculations or patterns that you use multiple times within your semantic model, instead of rewriting them again and again, you can simply create a UDF for this, saving you some time from rewriting this logic over and over again. It also has other benefits like centralizing your logic, making maintenance a little bit easier, but it's probably easier if I show you an example of this. So this is the Power BI report that we're going to look at today. It's a Power BI report with just two tables. This table that we're looking at is an order details table for a fictional company. And each of the rows here represents an order that's been made. Each order can have multiple products and each of those products have their own unit price and quantity. In this order details table, I've already created a measure here called total sales, which if I just select it, you can see that it simply does a calculation of the total sales by multiplying the unit price and the quantity values from this order details table. To start working with UDFs, you first need to make sure you enable it from the preview feature settings. So under the cog icon here on the bottom right, we're gonna go to preview features and scroll all the way to the bottom here and you should be able to see DAX user defined functions. You need to tick this option, press OK and restart your Power BI desktop to get it working. If you can't find this option under the preview features options here, you just need to make sure that your Power BI version is on the September 2025 version or later. Once you've restarted and enabled this preview feature, you will see the functions grouping enabled in one of these views, model view, DAX query view, or TMDL view. So I'll select DAX query view here. And on the right hand side, you will see that there will be a functions grouping here in your semantic model. This means that you're ready to create your own UDFs. So let's start with something simple. So if we have a look at this table that we have here, we have the total sales measure. And let's do a simple calculation to add the tax on top of the total sales for these products. So let's say the tax is 10%. Let's go back to the DAX query view and let's try to write and create our own UDF from here. So at the moment, there's no way to quickly create a UDF from scratch uh, without having any other functions in your semantic model. So we're gonna have to write it from scratch first. So we first start the syntax by using define and then let's give this function a name. So I'm just gonna put add tax here as the name and then open and close parentheses. So inside the open and close parentheses is where we'll add the parameters, which are basically the variables that we're gonna pass into this function for it to process. So in this case, it's just gonna be the amount. We're just gonna call it amount. And then I'm going to add a column here in the middle, and then I'm gonna put numeric. And I think I've missed an equals there. So, so it's the function keyword, add tax, the name of the function, equals, and then the parameter. So the amount, colon, numeric. So numeric is basically the data type that this parameter accepts. So this just ensures that if you call this function add tax in the future, this parameter amount will only allow you to get uh, numeric type values. Because otherwise, if you enter like a text here and we try to do math on a text value, it will produce an error. So this just makes sure that we have uh, the right data type. Now that we've set our parameter here, we're gonna use uh, equals and greater than. So this will 
just denotes that anything after this characters would be the return value of this function. So since we're keeping it simple, all we will do from here is basically just take the amount, multiply it by 10%, and that should be it. So once we, and if we are happy with this, let's just do update model and click update model there. And there you go. So if you look on the right hand side here, you will see your first UDF available for you here, the add tags. So now that you know how to create a UDF, how do you actually use this? So let's go back to our report here and where we have the total sales table at here at the moment. We have this measure here, total sales. And uh, let's say we want to use the UDF here to automatically apply the tax value to the total sales amount. So all we need to do is Part of the calculation here is the sum x, which multiplies the unit price and quantity, which just gives us the total sales. Now, instead of just doing this, we can wrap this, and I'm just gonna rewrite this so that it's a little bit simpler to, to read. I'm gonna start writing add tax here, and as you can see, the IntelliSense recognized the new function that we've just created, so we're just gonna select that, and it tells us that it can take an amount. So, we're gonna use unit price multiplied by quantity. So whatever the value is of this, uh, this calculation, we will add 10% tax on top of it. And just to be extra detailed, uh, we're gonna add with tax here, just to name it like so. And there you go. So the total sales are now calculated with the tax uh, that we have implemented in the UDF. Now that you know how to create UDFs, let's look at another scenario in which you would use a UDF and uh, a little bit more complex than what we've just done. So another table that I've created here is an exchange rate table, which uh, is just a list of the different currencies that we can convert the USD values uh, from into. So we have uh, the values here, GBP, Euros, and what the exchange rate is for each of these. So if we do the math to multiply the USD to this value, we will get the equivalent uh, rate for this in that currency. Now let's create a UDF that will allow us to convert any value, USD value that we pass onto it into the exchange rates that we define or that we say. So now let's go back to the DAX query view here. And now instead of writing all of these from scratch, you can right click any functions or UDFs that you've already created, quick queries, define new function. And it will create essentially the backbone for us to get started. So let's start by naming our function first. So I'm just gonna rewrite this uh, convert USD convert from USD. So that's a bit more descriptive. And then inside our parameter, we're gonna give it the amount and numeric. If you have multiple parameters, you can uh, separate them using a comma. So in this case, we want to also define what the target currency is. So if it's GBP, AED, or Euros, so we're gonna do it like this, and then same uh, colon, and then you will see the different types of uh, data types that you can choose. And this one will just be a string. So we'll just make it string like this. And then let's define what it actually uh, returns. So before we do any returns, let's actually create a variable first, which is uh, the lookup value that will find the rates, uh, the correct rates that we want to calculate against based on the target currency that the parameter gets. So what we're gonna do is use a function called lookup value, and lookup value takes three parameters. So first is the exchange rate uh, column. So this is the the actual value that you want to get, and then what you want to search against, so which column we want to ch check. So currency, and then the search value, so what are we finding in this currency uh, column, in which case it will just be the target currency, like this. Now we've defined a variable, now we're gonna do a return. So similar to how you would create variables in a normal DAX function, you just use the same syntax. So in this return, we're simply gonna do amount, which is the amounts that we got, multiplied by the rate that we've created here. 
And there we go. So now that we have basically defined the function, we can use the evaluate uh, portion here to test how this actually works. And we can do this by simply just calling the, uh, the function name. So we'll just do convert from USD. And then let's give it 21 and then let's give it uh, euros. Let's see if this will work actually. So there you go. So it's giving me a squiggly line because we haven't actually created this function yet in our model. So from its perspective, it's not really here yet. But you see if I call, um, so when I hit the run, it did run 21 and 21 multiplied by the value of the exchange rate for euros gives me the correct value here at the bottom. And you can check, check that actually by just writing a USD here. And if we hit run, you'll see it's the same value here, 21. So if we try again a different value here, 25. If we're happy with this function, we can simply just hit update model and it will simply create that function for us. And that's it. So you've created another UDF that is useful that you can reuse in different parts of your semantic model. And this one is really handy because it lets you convert any USD value to any currency that is available in the exchange rate mapping table. So let me show you how it will work. So for example, here, uh, let's go back to our, our report view here and let's create a new measure here. So let's say we want to do total sales with tax uh, GBP. So all we need to do is call our function, convert from USD, and then we simply take the total sales with tax as our amount. And then the target currency that we want is GBP. Then we close that. And then there you go. So as simple as that, you've got your total sales converted into GBP. One of the key benefits of the UDFs is the centralized way of how you handle or manage these logics uh, within your functions. So for example, if something changes like your exchange rates or the logic in which you calculate your exchange rates, instead of looking for all of the calculations, all the measures and calculated columns where you have done exchange rates, calculations on, you can simply just update the UDF function that all of those uh, calculations use and they will just all get updated automatically. So an example here would be if we go back to the DAX query view here, uh, the convert from USD for example, um, you'll notice that if I uh, just go back here and just put uh, some random text here uh, that doesn't actually exist in our uh, mapping table for our exchange rates, if I hit run, you will see that the value that it returns is blank because it doesn't find anything. So if we wanted to change this logic, for example, we can simply just do it in the function and any other calculations that use this function will inherit this automatically, which is great for management because you don't have to worry about changing everything uh, everywhere else. So. So let's add this bit of logic here to capture any values that don't exist in the mapping table. So for example, so if, if rate exists, do the calculation, otherwise give me the amount. So now if I do a run, you will see that if the target exchange rate doesn't exist in our mapping table, it simply just gives us the original amount. And that's really it for this video. So this UDF function is actually really useful and has a lot of utilities. And uh, I've always used Power Query functions for you know, creating my own custom functions like um, you know, converting currencies or maybe calculating network base, which didn't exist before in DAX. But now that this UDF function exists, it should make it a little bit easier for me to manage all of my functions and any of my repeated code across all my semantic models. As usual though, I'd be a bit wary if you want to use it in your production reports because it is in preview and it did just come out a few months ago. So it does have its own bugs. One of the most obvious ones that you will find and you will encounter this if you work with UDFs is if you change any or, or rename any references that your UDFs use. So for example, if we go to the USD exchange rate and just rename it. Normally, what you would expect is 
the references to change automatically like you normally expect in measures and calculations but UDFs do not do this so you will see that it it throws an error now and that's because the references to the USD exchange rate has disappeared because it didn't adjust based on the renaming that we've just done so if to, to fix this you just need to make sure you define uh, the or rename the tables as well like the ones that you reference in your UDFs and that should basically fix the issue there are other known bugs and limitations to this feature so if you do want to use it I will leave a link to the Microsoft blog post to give you more information about UDFs what else it can do and all that other stuff so the bugs and limitations so you can decide for yourself if you want to use it right now or not and I think that's a pretty good intro to UDFs let me know if you want me to cover uh, UDFs in a bit more details because I think there's a lot of things that I kind of glossed over and there are many different utilities that it can do so let me know in the comment section box below if you want me to cover those things